Hey guys, uh, for this worship tutorial video, uh, I'm actually responding to somebody who posted on uh, a previous video that I uploaded, so I do actually respond, I promise, I'm a real person. Um, anyway, so someone commented on a cover of It Is Well that I did with a couple of my friends uh, and said, hey, uh, I wanna play this song at my church, so I was wondering if you had any uh, tabs or if you could tell me like where your hammer-ons are and stuff. And I really hate making tabs. I think they're really monotonous and boring to make. Um, and I don't like it. I, yeah. Anyways, I just figured I need to make a new video anyways. So I'll just make you a video. So Sunshine 11 Be True or Sunshine 011 BTRU, however you say your username. This one's for you. Uh, thanks for commenting. I really appreciate it. And I needed to do this. So yeah, thanks for commenting. I really appreciated it shout out um so yeah this video is just a walkthrough on how i play it as well uh and it's all just like here in my office at church and um all up on my guitar so uh pretty simple but i hope that you like it um, thanks so i played this in the key of g which is what the original thing is and there's another tutorial which is probably on the right side of your screen that's like uh how to play the acoustic guitar like the piano which is all fine and good um and it's a good tutorial, so you should definitely check it out. But I don't think that you should play the acoustic guitar like a piano because it is, in fact, not a piano. So uh, I wanted to create something that had a unique sound um, and worked really well uh, on acoustic guitar just for a solo acoustic. Um, and I love playing in G or in D just because of the amount of hammer-ons and pull-offs that I get to play. So uh, throughout the uh, the verses and the instrumentals and things, um, I just start out, here's what I played. So that's basically three chords. There's G, D, and E minor. So I play this this G chord where it's just the G here in the bass note and then mute the A string and then the D and G sound and uh, the B and high E string both fretted on the third fret. So basically a G5 because there's no B. Instead of playing a D chord I play this A and pull off to zero, so from two on the G string to zero to open, and then straight to the E minor. So what you get? To hit the bass note and to have that pull off, I think simulates what the piano does with the sustain pedal where you can hit the bass note and then have a little D type movement and then go to the E minor. And then the second time around, which you don't actually see in the video, but in the studio recording, uh, which the SoundCloud basically that's linked in the uh, video description is you'll hear this. And that is just a hammer on and pull off um, on the G string, it's all on the G string from two to four and then pull off again and then pull off again to open to the E minor. So in time, that's... And that's really nuanced, um, but I think it just provides some nice character. And there are a couple different ways you can play the E minor to give it some different flavor also. There's a standard E minor. There's an E minor seven, which has uh, the B string fretted on the third fret. So that high D there. And then there's also the E minor 9 where you could add the F sharp, which is the 2 on the E string. Uh, so if you really wanted to fret all of those. A really nice sound, uh, which again you hear mostly in the studio version, not in the video. But just some different flavors to, to go in and, and play the nuance of that. Um, so that takes care of the introduction and also the verses. It's also, I think, really important to play, to strum this properly. Because if you listen to the piano, there's tons of space and they've got that great sustain pedal that just lasts forever. 
um, really carries the sound over. You can't just strum. Um, <laughs> That just, I mean, you could, but that implies a, a sense of new guitarmanship that doesn't offer any uh, subtle variety or nuance or dynamics in the song because as a, with an acoustic instrument, there's only so loud you can go, but you can almost go infinitely quieter than that until you just stop playing altogether. So what I do is I like to attack the low uh, bass strings and have a... Have it just kind of ring out. And then I use the treble strings to kind of fill in the space, but I want to make sure that there's a lot of space in my strumming, and that allows for um, that sense of sustain from the body and from the strings natural sus sustaining uh, instead of just strumming through. Because you're eventually going to get there in the bridge. So you want to save it in these verses and these instrumentals. Okay, and finally, I think I did this in the studio version, but if not, when you get to the bridge, which is just, uh, it is well, C chord, and then D, I'm sorry, D and E minor. Uh, that's the whole bridge. It is well with my soul, C, D, E minor. So sometimes, uh, because it lasts so long, you want to have it build, so got obviously the C2 which I play just like my G except I move my uh, middle finger down to fret the C and then D E minor so instead of that you could also play these style chords which is C the standard position C and then slide it up to to a D quasi D that allows for some really nice flavors to come out and then slide it up two more. And this is actually where it changes. So I'm gonna change my... So this is, um, you've got open E, and then you're fretting the A string at the seventh fret. And then what you're gonna do is, instead of maintaining the C shape, you're gonna put your middle finger where your first finger was. So you're gonna put your middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string. And then you're gonna put your first finger on the fifth fret of the D string, and you're gonna play this open. So you get this nice, uh, nice E minor chord, which I think Hillsong uses uh, in "Till I See You." Uh, but anyways, so then the bridge becomes. It is well with that nice upward motion so if you start low because of this high E because it sounds lower than the G and the D here the third fret then you get kind of a sense of build just in the way that you're voicing your chords so you start out here low and you can even pick through it it is well with my And then when you're getting to the bigger part, you go back to more comfortable chords, C2. It is well and to end, we're right back where we started. Thank you guys for watching this. A uh, big shout out to Sunshine 11 Be True. I think I've just decided that's how I'm gonna call your handle. Uh, for so big shout out to you for requesting me doing this even though you didn't actually request me to make a video i made a video for you anyways so there you go um if you guys have any other suggestions for videos that you want to see uh you know how you would approach a certain song from an acoustic guitar standpoint uh that drop me a comment or a tweet at me or whatever uh, and i will respond and probably make you one uh, i'm not in it to be famous but you can find me on twitter and instagram and obviously the youtube um so if you want to follow me then go nuts but it's your world you know i'm just living in it so uh thanks for watching and see you next time